Hello and good morning. This is Adam Ronestow, and you're watching another episode of Zero to Hero, where I talk about a specific philosophy and then how it applies to my business venture. <sighs> I don't usually have any kind of introduction for how I do these, but I like the way that sounds. And I think I'm going to keep doing that from now on. <clears throat> Those of you just tuning in, I, uh... I literally typically just talk about um, the things going through my mind. The whole business of this series was derived from how typically people are talking about their adventure from the end of it, looking back and what they did, but you don't get to catch all the details. So like, you know, all the rough times, all the specific indications that maybe were vital that weren't apparent because when you look back into the past, you tend to recreate details, not consciously, but, I mean, you may do it consciously, but every time when you go back to the past, you're always changing it to how you feel at the time. So, as an example, if you were trying to do something and you got very discouraged and you saw everyone else talking and saying how, look at the bigger picture, you know, we understand that it sucks at a certain point and it gets better. Um, that's all good and fine and dandy, but you might not believe that person depending on how they're talking about it because sometimes you don't remember all of the struggles. So that's like the whole purpose of this whole thing. It's just like, I already know from enough study that eventually when you do something for long enough, you end up creating something from it. So it's all about moving one step forward, right? So, here we are today, and I was just listening to some stuff um, from Dr. Joe Marcella, who is a pretty big influence to some of the parts of my book, um, not directly, but through his writings, and his book, Repeatlessness. You know, he talks a lot about mantras and why they don't typically work when you only use them in the first person's perspective, and... One of his most recent lectures was talking about the Wim Hof Method. Now, I've already been familiar with this, and I even own the book, What Doesn't Kill You, which is a pretty incredible book. And overall, the bottom line here is we've got a whole bunch of healing systems inside of our body. And... I'm planning at one point to make another book exclusively on health, and I'll still be doing research. That's how I come across a lot of this stuff, too. But it's very easy to fall off the beaten path. So there's a lot of stuff that I've said, done, that, you know, it's all based off very logical studies and um, deductions from experiences. But to a lot of people, it just sounds absolutely batshit crazy because... Well, you know, if you don't have a point of reference, it doesn't really set with anybody. It's like, how can you interpret the arbitrary information that comes into your everyday life? You know, a caveman, as I like to put it, when introduced to fire, would more liken it to being something of magical properties than actual combustion and, you know, what it is. So, it's all about the perspective and the ability to measure So, I was thinking of that the other day, that our ability to um, size up an event is only as good as our ability to measure it. What we ourselves are capable of deducing is very important in trying to discern what is real, what is not real. So, I believe because of enough repetition, which anything, for better or for worse, will happen in your psyche as you hear things over and over again to be supposed truths, um, I can say that I believe, and from first-hand experiences from the past, maybe I'll talk about that in a second, about how like the Wim Hof method actually is a very valid thing. And if you're not familiar with what the Wim Hof method is, the guy is known as being the Iceman. And he's had several Guinness Book of World Records 
in his favor for doing absolutely incredible things, like swimming naked, well, practically naked, under ice, like with the ice water, you know, it's like below freezing at that point, and swimming across, I, I don't remember the exact length, but it was so cold that his eyes, his cornea actually froze, so he was blind and underwater, but he was still able to find a way to get out. And the whole point behind the whole, the really cold fact is the he's always constantly referencing about these healing mechanisms within our body. And I've known for years now because I've noticed it for myself and I've done a lot of research on this stuff, your body is very capable of being able to heal itself. So whether or not we can has to do with a lot of influences and things that people don't want to hear because these are the kind of things that sound a little whimsical and they can't really put their finger on why it would have any impact. But I want you to keep this perspective as we're talking. Way back in the day, you know, we like to think that we have all this modern technology and we're doing way better off than we did before. That's all good and dandy. I mean, at one point we were dying of cholera which could have been easily prevented. And that's kind of like where the development of the Dixie Cup came in, where you have disposable cups. Because people were drinking out of the same vessel. I mean, I don't know if it was a cup or what. And they would get sick because they kept spreading, you know. Well, they kept spreading it. And uh, it became a, a big hassle. So that's where this idea of disposable cups came into play. Now, realistically, we know that we could just wash our cups and we'd be just as gravy. But that's just a quick fact for you, right? Um, so, with that being a K, or I'm sorry, <clears throat> there was a point where it was pretty bad and it required a simple solution because the quality of life had been terrible and gotten better. Another example would be like plumbing, right? Like before plumbing was really a big thing, we had situational issues with how our waste was going into our crops or into our cities and causing havoc. Now, it's been a long time since these two things have been relevant, but there's still been a lot of things that have been developed since then we attribute to being as necessity for obtaining our modern day life and things that we attribute for being important to keeping everything safe, right? Um, what are some of those things? Well, actually, I, I won't go into what are some of those things. I, I want you to keep that, that in perspective. I'll keep this nice and short and sweet. Um, the point I'm trying to make here is that there's several things that helped us out at a point, and then more things got developed, which cause us more harm, but because we're under the influence that we live in a better time, that these aren't potential threats because they can't necessarily see the time gap from somewhere like, you know, earlier in the 1900s and how, you know, next generations and next generations become a little bit more debatable. There's a lot of funny stuff happening there. And a lot of it's due to factors that we don't typically consider. So what are some of those factors? Um, well, as one example, and this hasn't been around for super, super long, but the internet, right? Now the internet's a very powerful thing, but when you have a wireless router inside of your house and it's being uh, distributed through you know, every room where you can get Wi-Fi signal, that has a big impact on your cells. We didn't evolve to be able to handle a lot of frequencies that are out there. And Wi-Fi is only one example. There's actually a lot of frequencies that are constantly bombarding us every single day. And if you look into EMF protection and development along or things along those nature, you'll start to realize very quickly there is a lot of stuff out there that is potentially disastrous for us. Now, the problem is if you spend one day in Wi-Fi signal, you don't have an issue. If you spend a year, you don't have an issue. If you spend it for 10 years sometimes, you don't have an issue. But that doesn't mean there isn't an issue. It just means that the point at which your body 
stops working isn't apparent until the actual collapse. So there's influencing factors constantly around us on a daily basis that we have the ability to take control of, but we don't do it because we don't see the potential threat. It's not super obvious, but that's kind of like the same as wasting your money. You know, buying a $2 candy bar, knickknack, trinket or something or something on sale or a garage sale isn't going to financially destroy you. But there comes a time where maybe 20 years pass, and then you've got these things you spent money on just laying around your house with absolutely no value to you. And upon reflection, you realize that they didn't have much value much after you bought them. They just sat around. They did nothing, and you didn't get rid of them because the emotional attachment that you put on them was purely from the fact that you didn't have a chance to do anything with them. So you held on to them. You collected these things over time. Well, we constantly want to keep introducing new things inside of our lives, and they're constantly changing us over time, and they're not super obvious. So without educating ourselves, we're not able to identify what the threats are. This, unfortunately, I won't have too much time to explain the entire thing. Maybe I can go on tomorrow and continue with this, because I am coming up to work. But the idea is there's a lot of healing mechanisms inside of the body and a lot of stuff that make you sound absolutely batshit crazy to an unconsidering public. People who aren't, you know, they're not ignorant. They're just not aware that there may be a problem. So if you have the opportunity to see this video, I would just say this as a breaking point. Go ahead, study about EMF frequencies, look, you know, and don't just stop at the first article saying they're safe. That's a cop-out. You know, <clears throat> when you put common sense into it, these things didn't exist before, while we were evolving, right? And we don't evolve that quickly where they became part of our lifestyle over a couple years. Um, but I'll stop it right there, and I'll continue with this tomorrow. So have a wonderful day for now.